Hey, Jason. Good morning. Hey, Sally. Everyone else? Just give it just a few more minutes, maybe a minute or so. I'm going to get a cup of coffee, and we'll start our day. I'm going to show you exactly what has happened recently, and we'll go over what's to come into the future. The trade I recommended everyone to take last Friday, last week, about going long. We'll go over that. We'll do a couple of new things as well. So hopefully we'll spend the next hour or so together teaching you something and you can take away from this webinar a little bit of price action on how I trade. So we'll just start in about a minute or so. Hey Dijon, good afternoon. Lewis, Dean, everyone else. Hopefully everyone is having a good day, a good Friday. Start off the day here. What I want to show you today is going to be based off of first, you know, what can we expect out of the market. So I'm going to do a little bit of recap on expectations, especially when you look at price action trading. We're not necessarily just looking at momentum or moving averages, but we're going to focus on something else which more closely relates to what is the market doing as a whole and then how can we take advantage of it. What we have happening is that the market is supposed to rally and go higher and higher. And it's not that I can expect the market to go higher every single day. It's not that I could just buy it and blindly hold on to it. We can't do those things. We have to have a bias to go long and then time it properly. So let me show you, and I'm sure that everyone here in the room attended or had an opportunity to view the live webinar we did on Friday last week, the 13th of March, which I explained. Let me just go here to a daily chart. I explained that if these highs are to be tested, we should enter long as the market tests those highs, right? So it's a very important to understand that markets love to test where they have previously been, and especially if we're in a long bias or a long trend, it's going to want to test those highs. But like I said, we have to time it properly. So therefore, why not test these highs and go long when the market attempts to test them and enter high just above the midpoint, just above the 50% from these highs. And this to me is a very good trade because if the market's going to do anything, it's going to want to try to get up there to those highs. And it's also an opportunity not to go into the unknown. I also think that if you go long as soon as it breaks these highs, that is also, even though we're going into the unknown, that's also a very good trade. Now, taking all that into consideration, we have to think about stops, we have to think about targets, we have to think about risk, we have to think about the, everything that bad that could happen about this trade. And so all these things have to be taken into consideration. So first, let's talk a little bit about an expectation. If I expect the market to go up there to those highs and I go long, what if the market doesn't go to those highs? How can I still take advantage of this trade and what can I expect out of it? So I tell everyone to add this tool, the ATR, the average true range, as well as the bar timer, but the bar timer doesn't work on a daily chart. So the ATR, the average true range, tells me that at the time that this market broke above the midpoint, and remember the entry that I mentioned was 20, 72.50. It's the same entry that I took, the same entry that I recommended to everyone. 2072.50. And this entry at 2072.50, let me just expand this here, is based on first the market breaking the midpoint by a few points. I say two points because it's it's a simple way to say, okay, we've crossed the threshold, let's go in. Whether it be a stop, a market, a stop would limit, so you're long at 2072.50. But now comes the risk, and now comes the ex expectation. I expect the market to reach as close to these highs as possible as it attempts to test it. Uh, but what if you instead uh, want to take what I say and what I recommend, and, and this is the same with the Atlas line, the same 
with the power price action the same way that almost every method that I teach why not take one times the ATR as an opportunity to get long and to exit based on expectations and so one times the ATR I'm using a value of four whether it be a five minute chart which is my focus or the swing type of trade a daily chart it's 24 points now 24 points is actually nothing to uh, cry about it's actually very good a very good target so I can expect the market if anything 24 points from my entry up so far so good everyone okay with that okay so now when I think about the 24 points I can have a set target to get me out of this trade or at least when the market makes 24 points I can begin to trail it and I'm not sure if I covered trailing stops in the last uh, webinar if I didn't remind me I'll be happy to explain to you how I do a trailing stop or trailing target I'll be happy to go over that again and 24 points happens to be from 2072 happens to be 94 I believe if my math is right 96 all right now good morning everyone glad you can join us so does that make sense so far does that make sense to everyone this use and this idea that if I'm going to go long I have to time it I'm timing it because the market's breaking the 50 percent above the most recent highs and not only that my specific target is based off what I expect the market can do so this is actually not complicated it doesn't have to you know you don't have to rack your brain and look at five or six different charts you don't have to have all these separate indicators all telling you either the same thing or different things all you have to understand is when this candle closes this average true range updates my expectation is 24 points up or even 24 points down if the market's going to move up or down based off of what it could do it could very well go down as well which leads me to my next point that I want to make about risk many times me included nobody wants to take a large stop but it's a necessary risk and a necessary evil that we take a stop or put a stop that is larger than what the current conditions tell me because if you want a two-point stop or a three-point stop or a 20-point stop I, I'll tell you from experience that the market will move up or down from this closing price which is pretty close to where the entry is at 2072.50 long will move up or down this value so it's irrelevant what I want the market doesn't care what I want the market only tells me that it could move 24 points up or down and therefore my stop cannot be less than 24 points based on a daily chart on a five minute chart it's less right in a five minute chart uh, it could be two points or three points right but on a on a large time frame larger profit you have to have a stop that is larger than what the ATR is so when and when somebody calls me and asks me about my stops and I tell them typically my stops they start out at you know larger than what the current conditions are and it's troublesome right who wants to have a stop this large nobody me included I don't want to but I understand that I have to because in order for me to stay in this trade the market's not just gonna go straight up every time it's gonna go up and down and up and down if my stop is smaller than what the normal movement is there's a possibility I'm gonna get stopped out prematurely so I want to bring that to the attention of everyone because when I teach stops in the classes that I have whether it be Atlas line or blueprint or power price action whatever it happens to be I always say it's not just one stop that's gonna protect you it's a, a culmination of stops so I think of time I think of proof I think of a catastrophic stop which in this case it would be something more like a catastrophic stop to protect me and the good thing is that the catastrophic stop or this idea of getting out of the trade larger 
a larger stop in case it does go against me, it's there because it's, it's necessary. So I just want to bring that to the attention of everyone because I would love to say to everyone here, it's a one point stop, it's going to work, it's going to work, but you're going to get stopped out one point on every single trade. So how does that help you? It doesn't help you. We have to stay or attempt to stay in this trade as it moves up and down normally. So then on the 16th, March 16th here, uh, 27,250 was hit, and so you're long, right? And so now what? Now your stop has to be larger than the 24 points, and your target should be what the expectation is, 24 points. Very simple. The next trade here went down a little bit, and so we're looking at this and we're saying, uh-oh, now what? What are we going to do? But you're going to notice that the stop being larger than what the current conditions are, it can't be equal to. It's got to be just a little bit larger than what the current conditions are to keep you in this trade. The market didn't move against you 24 points. So that's a good thing, right? You're still in this trade, and the expectation is still the market's going to go up. And the very next day, you have this pop. And that's exactly what I want to see. Because if this begins to flip-flop back and forth three, four, five days, even though it's not stopping me out, the market isn't doing and moving the way it's supposed to, then that to me is a cause for concern. Typically, and I mentioned this, and I think there was a lot of questions on this in the last webinar, 54 to 55 days typically is what the market has done in the past in matching or breaking those highs in an uptrend. So when you look at um, holding out to a trade for longer than expected, in this case, history tells us that if we're going to hit those highs and break those highs, and to still call this a strong uptrend in any type of trend, that it keeps on going higher and higher, making new highs, breaking the highs, 54 to 55 days. I don't want to see this flip around. Um, Alfred has a good question here. He says, how much larger uh, than the ATR would your stop need to be to keep you in the trade? Right. So it's a very good question. Now, I can't have a 100-point stop. It's impossible. Right, Alfred? So it's not something that I say have a, a, a stop that is so large that it doesn't make sense. On a five-minute chart, when you look in a smaller time frame, what I teach and what I tell everyone is two times the ATR up to five points on the E-mini S&P. So up to five points would be the maximum, and I would double it. So if the ATR is at two points, then I double it to four. If the ATR is one point, I double it to two. So it's within reason, and it's relative. If the market's slower, then you know your catastrophic stop is only double of those slow conditions. But it's typically up to five points. But now we're looking at a daily chart. And a daily chart has this stop of 24, or has an ATR of 24 points. Obviously, a 50-point stop or a 48-point stop is just too big. I can't risk 48 points on one trade, because if it goes 48 points against me, that's not a good, you know, it's a very bad day, right? It's a very bad loser. So on a daily chart, as long as you have your stop larger than the ATR, maybe not exactly 25 points, but let's say 26 or 28, you know that you're at least not giving the exact movement of a stop. You're giving it just a little bit larger. So on a daily chart, it has to be just a little bit larger. A couple of points more than the ATR is enough to keep you in the trade. But I wouldn't double to 48 on such a large time frame because catastrophically, that's 48 points, guys. You know, Dijon, it doesn't really matter if it was the FOMC or if it's other news. The reason really doesn't doesn't matter, right? So if you think about giving it a reason, you know, I didn't know what the FOMC was going to say last week. And if it wasn't the FOMC, it could have been something else. So the reason really is irrelevant. So I'm not counting on this move happening the way it did because of the FOMC. It could have been progressively going higher and higher and higher throughout the uh, the week. It could have taken longer than one day. So it's really not the reason that I'm looking for. It's the expectation. 
So Ken, on this type of a trade, the time limit, if you're going to hold on to this trade here, if you're going to see this hit 1 times the ATR, which is 24 points, which you see that it did right away, like this, you can't have this 24 points take forever. And even though I say 54 to 55 days, that's what we have in historically, how long the, the largest time and what it typically needs is 54 to 55 days. Now I can't hold a trade for um, almost two months or two months, right? You can't hold on to a trade for two months like this because it's it'll be painstakingly slow for me as a day trader to look at this. So I would say to you normally because we're looking at the super year, this definitely has to occur within a week to make at least one times the ATR as far as time. Because if a week goes by and it's flip-flopping back and forth, a week being five trading days, Ken, that's five days of it indecision, of it not knowing if it wants to go up. And within five days, remember the ATR is four, so it's taking into consideration the last four candles averaged out of a range. So that means if you go into the future four days, four to five days, it should absolutely be able to make one times the ATR. So when I teach the Atlas line, when I teach the, the other methods, not scalping, but when I teach the other methods, typically I give it four candles, which in this case would be the equivalent of four days, to make one times the ATR, especially on a situation like we have here where it breaks the midpoint and it's running and shooting right to the highs to test those highs. That is something I want to see immediately. I don't want to see this turn around and you know retrace a little bit more and then decide to go up. That's not the way this this trade works. Ken, you got it, Dijon. Uh, William uh, says here, how many Atlas lines are traded per chart per day? Well, I like to put just the U.S. Open, William, on the Atlas line. For the Atlas line, I'm going to show it to you. Actually, let me. Thanks for reminding me. Let me go to the Atlas line right now, and so we can see what the trade is going to be as it happens. All right, so I'd say in about 10 seconds or so, you're going to see the outline plot to go long or short. I don't know if it's going to go long or short. It's long, 29550, uh, William. So I like to have just the US 930, uh, for me, Eastern Standard, because I live in Eastern Standard Time Zone, Atlas Line. But you can place the Atlas Line at the start of the London session, which would be 3 o'clock my time, 8 o'clock locally in London. And you know, there's a training session that goes along with this as well, uh, which teaches you, you know, how to properly use the Atlas line. And there's other times that you can put the Atlas line on your chart as well, which are, I think, times that the day changes in case you need to. So you can place it more than uh, once per day, but it's as needed. So I don't like to put the Atlas line on every hour and look for every single trade because I think you're just you're over, really overdoing it. If this trade is going to work at 29.95.50, remember, what's the target? Can everybody see here what I recommend as a target? What's the target say there, guys? 2.4, if everybody can see that. So that means that if this trade is going to work based on it moving one times the ATR, the current conditions, two and a quarter points, 2.4, I round down, is two and a quarter, 2.4 is going to be 20.95.50, 20.97.75. This is the target. So it's very specific. We're not hoping, we're not looking at, um, I think it's going to get up there. What we're looking at is an exact target based on what the market is telling me it could do. And I want to take the subjectivity out of this equation. Remember, not every trade is going to work, so I can't say to you that you know expect a winner every day. But here, at least you have a specific target. The stop would be a maximum of four and a half points. That's the catastrophic stop. And if this trade doesn't work, I'm going to wait four candles, which is a time-based stop, to exit the trade. And after four candles, which is 20 minutes from now, if this target was not reached, wherever this price is, whether it be just before the target, maybe it's still at 
at the entry, which would be closer to a break-even trade, maybe it's a loss, small loss or small win. You cancel the trade or you close out the trade, and then we look for the next opportunity. It could be a pullback. It could be a strength trade on the Atlas line. So that's how we're going to manage this trade, knowing everything in advance about it. Okay? All right, anyone have any questions so far on what you're seeing? So remember, the, en the entry this morning, Atlas line 2095.50, long, two and a quarter point target. If my math is right, it's 2097.75. And now it's just wait and see. I don't like to walk away from the computer, so it's not that kind of, uh, of a trade where you just get up and walk away. You don't have to sit here every morning and live and die by each tick, but you definitely have to keep an eye on it. And if it moves, remember four and a half points, that's your stop, your catastrophic stop. So far so good, everyone's okay with what you're seeing here? Okay, let's talk about something else here. Uh, what I want to do today, besides showing you the Atlas line, reviewing the that trade long, I want to explain to you a little bit on how we can identify trends in the market. And everyone has a different way to identify a trend. Some people identify trends by moving averages. Some people identify trends by using trend lines. Some people identify trends with um, you know, using different time charts, right? So when you look at um, a 60 minute, a 30 minute, a 15 minute, a one minute, if they all align, then we have a trend. But remember, I, my focus is price action. My focus is not just looking at adding an indicator and then just following it blindly. I want to understand really what the market is doing price-wise. And so we have to take price and time into account if we're going to identify a trend. So one of the things that I teach in the power price action method is to identify a trend first before we look at uh, setting up the trade, looking for a long or short trade. We have to identify if there's a trend up or a trend down in any time frame and in any market. And that doesn't mean that after we identify a trend to go long or to go short. It's not what it means. It just means that we're identifying a trend and understanding what the market is doing. So if you look at this chart here, it's pretty much flat. It goes, you know, it's coming from here, it goes down, it goes up, and it's you know, more or less a, a whipsaw kind of market, right? And Sally, you're right, it is, which is Friday today, right? Options expiration. You know, if you look at a trend, there's really no trend here. So we have to first understand that you can't look at the market like this because I don't know what's going on. Whether this be a daily chart, a five minute chart, a weekly chart, this tells me zero. I don't know what I'm looking at. I'm looking at a channel, looking at a chop, I'm looking at uh, the market, you know, not doing really anything. So the one thing that everyone should get in the habit of doing is looking at a bigger picture even though you may be a day trader or swing trader and you want to see you know what's happening in the now that's okay but we have to look at something more along the lines like this which gives me all I did was shrink up the chart and if you guys need ninja trader if uh, you guys need live data for ninja trader just email me I'm able to get the uh, the live data feed so you guys can practice and everyone who uh, joins the mentorship program, I say to them, you don't have to rush to get a brokerage account right away and you know find a broker, deposit money. I say to everyone instead, practice first, get comfortable with the methods I teach, and then, because I can give you the live data feed for as long as you need it while you're practicing, get, gaining your confidence, being consistent, and then when you're ready, you can see if the NinjaTrader brokerage firm is right for you, or AMP, or Myris, or um, Optimus, or Progressive, or whoever you uh, want to interview to hold your, your money as a broker. But you don't have to rush. That's almost the last thing you do instead of rushing into making mistakes. So we're going to crunch up your chart here, and we're going to see where's the market coming from and where's it going. And so even though I, I look at the bigger picture, I think everyone would agree that this is an upward trend. But if you look at this as an upward trend, maybe Dijon or Bob or Dave or William can say, no, no, this market is going down. It's a downward trend. And somebody else, maybe Freddie, 
or Hubert or Jason or, or Art and they look at this and say no no the market's flip-flopping this is what the market's currently doing so you can see how if we don't have rules that dictate the market is either yes in a trend or no in a trend we can all look at this and interpret it differently so what I want to do is I want to take that out and say let's all look at understanding yes this is an upward trend or no this is not a trend or no this is a downward trend and we have to look at this as the market going down so we all have to be on the same page we call it we can't look at this and think of a different aspect as a trader so the first thing I look at is time and price on any market and any uh, time frame. Time and price on any market and on any time frame. What that means is that a trend on a five minute chart is going to look much different than a trend on an hourly chart or a trend on a daily chart or a trend on a weekly chart. We have to look at the chart and say what's the time and the price so I can interpret a trend in the specific market and chart I'm looking at. On the E-mini S&P I use something called a 6-6 and those of you who are um, power price action clients you know that uh, during the eight weeks you know I go over so there's eight weeks of training with the power price action method where we meet once a week and I teach exactly as what you're seeing here um, identifying trends what are the signals just focusing in on the price and what I teach there is the 6-6 six, six on a five minute chart on the e-mini S&P tells me that I need a combination I need both six candles plus six points occurring to equal a trend and if you don't have six points and six candles happening, a minimum of each, happening at the same time, then we don't have a trend. Or maybe the trend up hasn't converted into a trend down. So at any point in time on a five minute chart, and you can relate this as well to a daily chart or a uh, 60 minute chart, you always know whether or not we're in an uptrend or downtrend, and then we can take a look at signals. Where am I going to enter? Based on what evidence? Based on what the market's doing? Am I going to take a, a counter trend trade? Am I going to take a continuation trade? Am I going to take a breakout trade? Am I going to take so all those things then come into the setups and the signals? But we have to start this off with are we in a trend? Yes or no? Six six. So what does six six really mean? It means that if you have one large candle like an FOMC or an, a news event that occurs housing or even Janet Yellen speaking about uh, you know she's thinking about raising interest rates or not raising interest rates and the market spikes one candle eight points ten points does that really equate that one candle to a trend when you have one bar with a large distance what do you think would you say that one candle that's an eight point burst due to a news event would you say that that equals a trend guys just because of the distance I would say no so when you have for example this candle here this candle is 209650 2092 that's about four points I would say a pretty large bar in range can you say that this candle is a trend no definitely not on the other hand let's say that you're looking at the market during a slow period and overnight or maybe towards the end of the day you just have about 20 or 30 candles of flop it goes up a couple of points goes down a couple of points goes up two or three points goes down two or three points you have all these candles all this time similarly to let me show you to this let's say that you saw this can you say that from 10 o'clock to 4 in the morning that's a good six hours. Can you say that's a trend? Six hours of data. 
Definitely not. This is just a big flip-flop, back and forth, back and forth mess. 87 to 83 is four, already, I'm sorry, 87 to 83, four points. 87 to 83, So this is six hours of a four point range. Not a trend. So you have a situation where the market does nothing, you can't call it a trend. You have a situation where the market goes very strong and bursts, one candle, two candles, three candles, not a trend. So now let's combine the two ideas and let's say I need to have a total of six points minimum distance and I also need to have at least at least six candles that make up that move that six point distance so I can understand we have a trend up or trend down and that way anytime you look at the market you start off at the highest high lowest low most recent swing most recent pivot however you wanna interpret it you always know if I look at it from here has the market moved six points down in distance and do we have at least six candles plotting and if the answer is yes we have a trend down on the other hand if you look at I'm gonna go back here if you look at this low I guess pivotal low swing low however uh, you wanna call it has the market moved six points in distance and has it within those six points of distance has it uh, traded with at least six candles if the answer is yes you have an upward trend that takes your guesswork out of it you know exactly trend up or trend down at any point in time and now you can say we have a trend up we have a trend down let's look at counter trend entries let's look at continuation um, entry to go long let's look at a breakout entry if the market stalls and then continues let's look at um, all those or maybe uh, scalping let's look at so with that I would say half the battle is won because you're now with a different mindset you understand the market is trending up or down okay so now what now you have a 6-6 six, six, and I want to make sure everyone is clear on that so if anyone's not clear on the on the 6-6 six, six on a five minute chart then uh, let me know I'll be happy to show you more examples of it and the reason why so everything I, I, I show and I teach is has a reason it's not just because I say I want to explain to you this is what happens let's all test it go back and see it and validate it as well but on a five-minute chart six points and six candles makes a lot of sense but what if you're not a five-minute trader like me let's say you're a day trader and let's say that you're looking at identifying a trend because you want to hold on to a swing trade or you want to look at a different market how can you adjust that 6-6 six, six into a larger time or a different market so let me show you I'm gonna go here to a daily chart or I can choose if anyone wants to see a 60 minute it doesn't matter it's all the same it's time and price guys so we'll go to a daily chart and on a daily chart I'm just going to put this out of the way here and expand this here a little bit. What we have here is are we in an upward trend or not? Because 6-6, six, six, obviously 6 points for a daily chart is nothing. It's nothing. The market shows me that it moves 25 points most recently. So I can't use the 6-6 six, six model, but what I can use is the equivalent of a 6-6 six, six based off a daily chart. And the way you do that is we're going to keep the six candles, six bars, the same. It's a constant. So whether you're looking at the euro, whether you're looking at an hourly chart, daily chart, weekly chart, we're going to leave the six candle, six bar part of the equation the same. What we're going to do now is look at the distance. What does price have to do in distance wise, not time. Time is taken care of by the, the six candles, but in distance, 
we have to relate to what time chart we're using. So what we're going to do is we're going to crunch off this chart here a little bit. And I have here almost a year of data. I'm going to expand this here. And I'm going to go back to my trusty and very useful ATR, average true range. And this ATR tells me a wealth of information, primarily what has the market done as far as the extremes, what has the market done on a daily chart as far as when the market's very slow, choppy, like in this tight range candles, what has the market done. And it also tells me something beyond the extremes. It tells me what has the market done on average. What can I expect on average day in and day out? And 25 points is average. This is what, on a daily chart, the range of normal on the E-mini S&P. Now, there's a tool that I use called the Fibonacci uh, retracement tool. It's Fibonacci retracements. And I don't use any Fibonacci value because I think that they're a little bit subjective. And sometimes they work. Anything works sometimes. But I'm only using this tool to say, here's the extreme, about 40 points. 10 points is probably the, the smallest range day. And you see here, it's about 25 points just to validate that the midpoint and what is normal day in and day out is 25 points. If you want to use it exact, it's 25 and a half or 25 and a quarter. But I know that, and you know what, this does not have to be um, exactly to the tick. So on average, I think everyone would agree, based on what I just showed you, 25 points is the average on a daily chart normal. Normal day, 25 points. So far so good, everybody? Everybody's okay with me with that? So now on a daily chart, I know what's normal. So how do I equate identifying a trend with the 6-6 uh, six, six that I use on a five minute chart? Well, remember, the six candle, six bar plot is standard. It doesn't change because now instead of it being 30 minutes on a five minute chart, it's six days on a daily chart. So that's constant. But now the ATR, the average ATR, so in this case on a daily chart it's 25 points, is going to be multiplied by 3. And when you multiply 25 points times 3 on a daily chart, you get 75 points. So it's relative. If you're looking at an hourly chart, maybe on average the hourly chart has only moved, let's say, 10 points. And so you multiply that by 3. So on a daily chart, 25 points is what's expected based on what I've, what I've shown you here. On average, the, that's what a day can do. I multiply that by 3, I get 75 points. So now the equation is not 6-6. Six, six, but 6.75 for a daily chart, which means that if you want to identify a trend on a daily chart, we're looking at a minimum of 75 points distance and at least six candles minimum to make that 75 points. And once you have 6.75, you can say uptrend or downtrend. So now I can start it off anywhere I want on this chart. It doesn't matter. You just have to take it from the swing, most highest high, lowest low, even where we are right now on the chart. So let me just bring this over here and I can take it to where we currently are right now. I think everyone would agree that this is the highest high in the chart. So are we in a downward trend or not? Well, the market has to move a minimum of six candles, which we have here, one, two, three, four, five, six. Maybe we have about 10 or 12. 
already 12 or 10 or 12 days have passed so the six candle part of the equation is taken care of has it moved 75 points let's take a look 2108.50 minus 75 let's see if, if I can pull off the math right is going to be um, 2013 maybe about down here 2034 okay so I wasn't too far off 2034 is right here from here to here if it's moved 75 points and it's moved six candles minimum you can say the market is in a downward trend as of this bar and from this point on you can say okay so I've identified a trend down on a daily chart on the E-mini S&P and now what I do next is either look for a counter trend move look for um, a breakout if it continues lower look for a continuation and that now comes with the rules and the setups of actually entering into the market but as far as identifying a trend this is it now if the market moves six candles and 75 points up from this because this is exactly 75 points then we have an upward trend remember just because we have a trend up or trend down doesn't necessarily mean it's a continuation the trend is going to continue it just means we have identified the market moving enough of a distance and with enough candles to say it's on its way going somewhere alright guys hey thanks guys 2033 okay thanks Sam 2033 Juan okay so now I showed you what it is to identify a trend in a daily chart let's see what this trade is doing hold on guys let me go back to a five minute chart and then I'll go back here so what are we where are we at here with this with this non-starter here on Friday the entry is 2095.50 right here one two three four okay so time based stop my exit is 2094.75 the loss, three ticks. So the entry is the closing price of the second candle. We start counting time based stop, prove it stop, catastrophic stop. That's how you manage the trade. Wherever the candle is on the fourth, wherever the price is on the fourth candle, you're out, you exit. And so if anyone is still in this trade long, it's still at pretty much where the entry is here you're out you should be out of the trade guys I don't know and remember hindsight is always 2020 I can say give it an extra candle or it's poised to go higher I think it's gonna go up looks like maybe all those words take out of your vocabulary as a trader and instead say I gave this an opportunity to work 20 minutes or four candles after I entered the trade did not follow through there's no reason for me to hold on to a trade and I would say to you at this point it's hope if you're just hoping it's going to eventually get there and I've seen a lot of good traders lose a lot of money because they have this hope that eventually it's going to come back and they start averaging in and doing all those things that you shouldn't do take the loss it's just three ticks this can be made back in the next trade no sweat what we want what we don't want is the large five point 10 point losses that's what we need to avoid Kevin Kevin I have a, a mentorship student actually two of them th that they were floor traders and I'm not sure if Kevin is here in the room uh, there's a lot of people here in the room but uh, Kevin was a floor trader in Chicago and he was recommended to my program by another mentorship student who was also a floor trader and they traded bonds they didn't trade financial e-mini uh, they, they were old timers who were uh, trading options and bonds and things and he uses hopium all the time so I bet you Pat that you're an old timer you've used that word for a uh, a while now because that's not a word that newbie traders or new traders are used to using okay does that make sense is everything that I'm that I'm saying here 
clear so far? Okay, so now I don't know if the market's going to go up or down right now. That's where the setups come in. Pullback trades, strength trades, uh, blueprint trades for price action, maybe scalping trades on the trade scalper. The market is above the atlas line, so you have a, a long bias, if anything, but it doesn't automatically mean jump in, wait, and time it right. And if there's a pullback or strength trade, which we haven't had yet, last uh, Friday when I had the webinar, there was pullback after strength trade after pullback after strength trade, and they were all firing off on the chart, but this is a little bit different. You have here these dojis, which are indecision candles. You have the market more of in a whipsaw or a channel, and so you're not going to get pullback and strength trades unless the market cooperates and gives you those setups. Okay, so it's always best to wait. Okay, so let's take a look at identifying a trend in other time charts so you guys have a clear indication of what it means to identify a trend. In any type of trading that you're doing, at least you know what to do. Alfred, great question here, says here, so your original stop on this trade was four and a half points, right, Alfred, because it was two times the ATR, two times the current conditions. So at the time of this trade, Alfred, the current conditions were two and a quarter. I round down from 2.4, two and a quarter times two is four and a half. Four and a half points is a catastrophic stop. And the, the reason for the catastrophic stop, Alfred, if you if you haven't seen the uh, you know any of the videos or webinars if you've attended uh, where I explain the reason for it, it's not the stop that I want to get hit. It's not the stop that I'm waiting to get hit. It's not the purpose to that stop. The purpose to that stop is to say if something happens catastrophically in the world, terrorist attack, earthquake, um, news event of some sort, then I say let me protect myself because the market should not move more than double what the current conditions are. So it's relative. If the ATR was one point, again it would be a catastrophic stop of two points. It's relative. So based on the current conditions, two and a quarter times two is four and a half. But that's not the stop that usually gets hit. It does get hit once in a while. A catastrophic stop comes, and you're going to be happy you have it in place. It sucks when it happens. Yes, I know. But you need it. Because if you have a smaller stop, you're going to get stopped out prematurely. If you wait until it gets hit, then it's useless as well. It's not something I want. Instead, let's use time, which is the four bars time-based stop, and let's use proof, which is a prove it stop, a close on the opposite side of the atlas line, to get me out of this trade if it doesn't make my target, whatever the target happens to be. So now we have one, two, three, four. I don't know the future. I gave this an opportunity to work. You're clicking close, or you move your limit order to the close of this candle, which would probably most likely be on the open of this one, where you're going to exit as soon as that candle opens. And the reason why I tell everyone to use the bar timer, it's no surprise that this candle is closing and a new candle is open opening. I'm not caught off guard. I know that I have 10 seconds, 1 minute, 2 minutes, whatever it may be, to close out this trade. And the same thing, when you're preparing to enter, you know that you have 1 minute, 2 minutes, 3 minutes left to prepare yourself to enter long or short. Alfred, let me know if that makes sense. So let me show you here a couple of examples. This is yesterday. And in each of these trades here, you have filters, you have, if you have looked at overbought, oversold, overexhausted, those videos where I teach you the distance factor, you have to take that into consideration too before you enter. But each of these trades, you're not looking for a catastrophic stop. You're looking for a time-based stop or prove-it stop if you don't make your target. So in each of these examples, the catastrophic stop isn't the exit. It's a much smaller stop or the target, whatever happens first. And so if the market continues, you have pullback and strength trades. That's yesterday. This is the day before yesterday. 
short and long. The day before that, you have a short and then short and then long and more long and so on and so on. Okay? The day before that, 16 was a long trend and this is the 13th, this is last week, last Friday. Profit target is going to be two times the ATR. Um, similar, Dean, but the entries are different. The power price action uh, uses the same kind of rules for stops and exits, proof, uh, but the entries are not based off of any um, indicator per se. Um, even though I include the ABC indicator uh, with the power price action and it comes with the um, the X5 bonus, uh, the entries are completely different. It's just based off of uh, price and time. And by the way, when I get the questions that say, well, what kind of trading do you do? Is it Fibonacci's? No. Is it following trend lines? No. Is it volatility? No. It's not anything to do with that. It's just really basically understanding what the price is doing and then taking trades based off of that. All right, now, I wanted to show you here the same thing on a 60-minute chart. How do we identify a trend? So on a 60-minute chart, what you're looking at, let me just remove here everything, and I want to let you guys kind of roll with it. I'm going to ask you a couple of questions to see if you guys are paying attention or if you're clear on it. I'm going to crunch up my chart here and maybe I'll add a little bit more data here. Let's say 300 days. And when I crunch up the chart, I'm going to look at on an hourly chart what are the extremes. The extremes so far look at about 15 points and maybe about two points, let's say. Right? Seems to be pretty much the extremes if you look at the last 300 days. Right? Even maybe the, this may be a little bit more, maybe it's closer to 10. So we'll keep it here, let's say at, at 12. 12, 13 for an extreme. Okay, so we have the extreme highs when the market's very volatile and the lows. So now what we do to identify a trend is I look at what is the midpoint on an hourly chart. The market can expect to move about eight points of range every hour on normal activity. Eight points times 3 is 24 points. A trend in an hourly chart is equal to 24 points and 6 candles plotted minimum. You have to have both. Let me lower this now and expand this here. 24, 6, right? So where are we at? Well, I look at the most recent swing, high, low, 24 points up or down, 20.99 minus 24, it's going to be 2073, I think, 2073, 2074, This would be the equivalent of the distance, and this has definitely more than six candles, so I don't have to worry about counting them. So if you look at the highest high swing, has it moved, da has it moved down at least six points? I'm sorry, has it moved down at least 24 points because we're looking at an hourly chart? If the answer is no, then on an hourly chart, this is still an upward trend. It hasn't changed. If you look at this as well, 74 minus 24 is going to be um, 50. Never reached 50, so it is still an upward trend. We haven't changed the trend down. And so at any point in time, you can always understand are we in an upward trend or downward trend based on the chart, time chart you trade. 
All right. Does it use the same rules for scalping? No, it doesn't. It uses different rules. There's still a time element, but it's not for candles. It's a great question. Dijon uh, says here, what if you enter a limit order and don't get filled? How long do you wait until you cancel it, or can you get in later? Okay, so now we're talking about details, right, Dijon? And remember, with trading, the devil is in the details. So let's say, let me go back here to a five-minute chart. Oh, man, look at that market move up. Okay, so details here, this is going to be a strength trade. It's going to pop. Uh, you're going to see S's on the chart in a second. Um, details, details, right, Dijon? If you enter a limit order and you don't get filled, and that could be either an entry or a limit order for profit as well, and maybe you're too slow and it takes a while for the uh, the trade to get filled coming all the way from the Netherlands uh, to your broker, Chicago, and you don't get filled. You have to consider a few things. You hold the trade to get long if it hasn't yet made the target that you want. And sometimes, I'll push this into the future, you want 2095.50 and the market gives you this price and immediately as soon as it closes it jumps and so obviously you're gonna have a hard time using a limit order at 2095.50 to get in I always say try to get in at a better price if you can a tick or two better if you can uh, but let's talk about just getting in at the exact price limit order and it doesn't fill you if the market moves up and makes whatever target, whatever target happens to be, um, two points, two and a quarter points, one point. If it makes the target, I would say to you, Dijon, the trade has done what it was supposed to do and you missed it and you shouldn't try a second time leaving that limit order there if it comes down and fills you because what you're doing is you're hoping that it's going to do the same thing twice or the same thing three times in a row. That's typically not the case. Now, if it doesn't reach the, pro the target, let's say it's two points or one, whatever the target happens to be, and you miss it, you can still hold on to this 29.550 if on the next candle or next candle it comes down and, and you're able to get filled. But if it happens to make that target and leaves you out of it, I would consider just in the presence of trying to keep it consistent, Somebody got filled there and somebody took the profit. And if it wasn't you, you can't stay in the trade. You're now doing something else, Dijon. That's the first thing, okay? That's the answer to your question, okay? If you missed it, you missed it. I wouldn't chase it and I wouldn't try for a double top or double bottom. Uh, thinking it's going to give it to you, it doesn't always happen, okay? The target. Alfred is uh, one times the ATR, the target. That's a very concrete exit, Alfred, that you know the market can do. From that point on, you can trail it, trail a stop or trail a target. All right, Frank, email me if you have any questions, all right? I'll also post this video, this webinar, on the uh, the blog over the weekend. You guys can review it. Lewis, you take into consideration the supply and demand levels of support and resistance. I would say if it's major support or resistance, Lewis, especially if you're looking at the um, the daily chart with the highest highs, obviously if there's major support or resistance, double tops, double bottoms, it's something that you know exists, right? I don't really take it into consideration as part of what I do, so I would say no. It's not something that I, I um, focus on. I know it exists and I just take the setups and the trades based on the rules. And if the rules dictate that major support or resistance is something that I have to be careful with, then I'm going to adhere to the rules. I think instead, Lewis, of support and resistance, I focus more on entering within a certain price in which the market could still grow. And it, when it makes a big move, and I consider that overbought or oversold, that to me is more important than support and resistance. Uh, for filtering. To me, 
I'm more concerned with these big pops where everybody believes that this is a great opportunity because look at all that strength and it doesn't happen and instead it, it reverses or pulls back or stops moving after it makes that pop. In my opinion that is m more important to, um, to use as a filter to focus on when you jump into long or short trade. For trailing stops, right? Um, let me show you how to trail a stop, okay? Mr. John Paul. So for a trailing stop, what we're going to do is we're going to look at a different idea of how most of you probably trail a stop. I'll go to um, the five minute chart. And let me answer it before I show you, uh, John, the um, the trailing stops. Let me answer a couple of questions here and then I'll go into how I trail a stop. I'll show you, I'll teach you how to do that. Um, Eric, is the long still valid on the Atlas line? Let me answer that question first. So the Atlas line long is 2095.50, Eric, and that occurred here. And so this was the entry. Remember, after one, two, three, four, if that target wasn't met, you didn't meet what the current conditions could give you, then you're out of the trade. So no, the answer is no. This long at 2095.50 is no longer valid to go long. It's finished. That was the trade. And now you look for a follow-up trade, strength, pullback, trades to go long based on price action. Price is still above the Atlas line, so the bias is still to the long side, but you have to time your entries. Eric, so the answer to your question, this is not something that, it's something that happened already. It's done. Um, Elisa, for the 6-6 method for finding uh, the trend, can we use the same parameter, six points, for smaller time frames like one minute or three minute? Yes, you can, but the same parameter is not six points, Alicia, Alicia, Alicia. It would be instead six candles in whatever, whatever the uh, midpoint of the one minute or three minute from the extremes, whatever the average price movement is, that's how you quantify it. So let me take a look at you want a one minute or a three minute, Elisa? P take your pick. I'll show you the example. I'll, I'll show you exactly three minute. Okay, so let's go to a three minute, Elisa, Alicia, and we're going to do the same thing, right? So the rules are exactly the same, whether you're looking at E-mini or or something else. And on the Atlas line, uh, the entry here in the three-minute chart happens to be the same, but now you have to manage it differently. The target's smaller, the time-based stop is four bars based off of three three-minute bars, not off of five-minute bars. So it's still four candles, but not 20 minutes. It's now 12 minutes. So it's it's, it's uh, relative to the chart. So let's take a look at identifying a trend on a three-minute chart. I'm going to crunch the chart up here, and remember, we're going to look for extremes. The extreme is, I'm going to say one tick, right? Because I know that's uh, what I'm looking at here. 0.22 is one tick. And the extreme here, let's take a look, let's go back here in history and see what on average the market did as a spike or as an extreme. Now, that's pretty good, right? About five points. I think that's a pretty good indication of an extreme. All right. So Alicia, up to this point, let me know if you're clear on what I'm doing. Five points as an extreme on a three-minute chart. Even though this is a, a larger spike, you have to take into consideration not just that one day out of the year that gave that spike. It's, you know, what is the what are the highs or extremes typically? And I think that five points, I see it almost hit five there. I see it hit five here. I think that's more of a constant, right? So now I take either by visually looking at the midpoint, which looks like about three, or maybe two and a half, two and a quarter, or you can look at the FA short code, which is Fibonacci extension of 50%. Here are my settings again. If you guys want to copy them, you can copy them. Zero, 150. That's what I'm using. Right click, manage templates, save default. Yes, the next time you bring up this Fibonacci re retracement, it's only going to show 0, 150. I'm not interested in 76, 61, 
38 because that's what everybody else is doing. Everybody else is using those numbers. I'm not interested in that. I'm just using this tool as an exact 50% marker. Two and a half. So how do I identify a trend in a three-minute chart? 2.5. Oops. 2.5 times three points equals seven. Seven and a half. Seven and a half points plus six candles equals trend three minute chart. Okay. Alicia, let me know if you're okay with that, if that makes sense. Okay, everyone okay with that? Awesome. Very good. See? Not that hard. And I don't think trading should be difficult. I think trading just needs to be clear. The more stuff that you, you put on your chart, it really does defocus you on, on, on off of the basics. So whether you're, you're interested in anything that, any type of method that I offer or not, try to keep your trading as simple as possible. Whether that be you know, simple support and resistance or simple you know, price action type of methods, just keep it simple. You don't have to overcomplicate this. Euro, Jason. What well, do you want to see the five minute euro? No problem. Let's take a look at the five minute euro. Let's go to five minute. Let's go to a euro here, six E. And remember, we're trading the June contract. And this is the euro, right? I'm sorry. Six E. Yeah, okay. All right, so let's clean this up a little bit. Let's take a look at the euro. Let me remove some lines here. Okay. So here we have the atlas line on the euro. This is the first time I'm looking at this today, guys. So let's see what what kind of moves we have. Um, okay, so 1.080, 1080 is the entry. So this entry here in the Atlas line occurred because one, two, closing price of the second candle. I'm long, Jason, at 1080 on a five minute uh, chart. Okay? Now, I look at what are the expectations for this trade? How am I going to manage this trade? What are my stops? You know, so I need to know everything about this trade before I enter. So what are we looking at here? We're looking at a target that is based on this ATR. I'm going to write this down, 0 0.00171. So what is that? What is the ATR telling me? Well, if you move the decimal place over, four places to the right, the equivalent is going to be, <clears throat> excuse me, it's going to be uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 17.1. That is the equivalent of 17 ticks. So far so good, uh, Jason. So remember, the average true range gives me the same information. The scaling may be a little bit different because it's not points on the currencies. It's instead ticks or pips. And on every currency, you move the decimal place over four places to the right, it'll give you the ATR. So what can I expect out of this trade, guys, guys and gals? These rules are exactly the same. Nothing changes. Be objective. 17 ticks up. And the stop, the catastrophic stop, is going to be double 17 ticks. So you're looking at, uh, well, you can't double this. No, you can't double it, but it has to be a maximum. You can't just double it um, exponentially. For example, if that was 20 ticks, you're not going to risk 40 ticks. So it, the stop has to be um, a maximum. I say a maximum of five points on the E-mini. I would say on the currencies, a maximum of 30 ticks. That would be the maximum that would want to risk. Very good, Dijon. Excellent.
Ah, okay. So the question now, Jason, how do you transfer this into the trend, right? Okay. So first, let's take a look here. One, two, three, four. Seventeen ticks would be eighty plus seventeen. Not seven, uh, Dijon. Seventeen, right? Eighty plus seventeen. I'm sorry. Uh, zero eighty. One two. Let me see here. One two three four five six seven eight nine ten. Um, all the way to seventeen would be seventeen ticks. So this is exactly one zero eighty. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Right about there. Your target was reached on the next candle or the next candle after that. But remember, the rules are the same. Four bars after entry, catastrophic stop, time based stop. So if this target of 17 ticks was not reached by one, two, three, four. At the close of this candle, you would exit. But since this was reached, you're done. You're not going in a second time. You're not trying uh, again. This trade is finished. Now you look for additional pullback or strength trades if they happen, right? So you have to wait, or maybe a short. If it happens double bar short like this, now it's the same thing. Double bar short, entry is here. One, two, three, four, and you're out of the trade. That's by the close of this candle. I want to make sure that the target of 16 ticks now, remember, move the decimal place four places to the right, 0 0.0016, 16 ticks. 16 ticks would be 87 minus 16 it would be 71, if my math is right. Right about there. And you're out of the trade if it doesn't reach the, let me see here, 87. 77 is 10 minus 6. 77 minus 6, 71. Yeah, it's going to be 71. So you're out of the trade. That's it. So the entry short and your exit. In this case, it did not make the full target of the ATR. And that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. You're out of the trade, close of the fourth bar. That's the rule. Objective, clear, no sweat. 17 ticks, target, James. Correct. Do you understand, James, how I got that? 17 ticks? James? Or how I interpreted the 17 ticks? Because the ATR at the time of the entry happens to be, uh, well, 16 ticks, I guess. Six, 0 0.0016, 16 ticks. And so when this fired off, based off the closing price of, the, of this candle, this is the current condition. So that's the target that I'm using. 16 ticks, not 17, 16 ticks. So 1, 2, 3, 4, and you're out of the trade. 16 ticks right there. Now, one other thing, uh, James, that I also advise, when you're in a trade, the ATR can change. It can go and be um, larger, or it can get smaller as well, right? So, yes, absolutely, Alfred, absolutely. The answer is yes to that. It's a maximum. You're not going to just exponentially double it. So you see how this ATR changes as time progresses. Maybe the candles get larger. Maybe the candles get smaller. Maybe the, the market starts to whipsaw, tight range. And so that's going to change the ATR. And we have to adjust our target based always on the current conditions. And so if the ATR increases, James, I, am, I always say leave the target the same. We're not going for more target. Because if the ATR increases, it could be because the candle is getting 
has a lot the next candle or the next two candles have a larger range but it could be going against you in the opposite direction so you're not going to increase your target making it further away from trying to reach your goal but if the ATR gets smaller as the trade progresses it's telling you something this ATR is invaluable what you can interpret from what the market is doing at any point in time if the ATR gets smaller it also tells me that the candles and the market are shrinking. The range may not be reached when I initially entered into the trade of 16 ticks. It may be only be 14 ticks or 15 ticks or 13 ticks. So as you progress through this time-based stop, you see how this now dropped to 15 ticks? 000158, round down 15 ticks. You would adjust your target to 15 ticks. And on the next candle, it dropped down to 14 ticks. So you would be adjusting your target based on what the ATR is telling you. In this case, the ATR is getting smaller because the candles are getting tighter. And that is a clue to tell you, take a smaller target. It may not reach your, your 16 that you wanted initially. You're managing this trade based on the current conditions. James? Make sense? Okay. Does anyone have any questions on that? Because that's important as well. But regardless, at the close of the fourth candle, even if you're constantly, uh, you start off at 16, now it's 14. If it didn't reach your 14 or 13 or 16, regardless, we don't know the future. We're out of the trade, close of the fourth bar. And it still went from 87 to 81 here at six ticks. It still made some money. Six ticks is nothing bad, but I'm not holding on with, with the hope that it's going to eventually get there. I'm cutting it loose. I gave it a chance, and it didn't make what I wanted, what I expected. You're done with it. Um, Jason, trend. You want to know about the trend in the euro, right? So nothing changes. Crunch up the chart here a little bit, and... 300 days, okay. Look at extremes. So on a five-minute chart, what are the extremes? Let's take a look. Uh, seems about 40 points. Oh, man, that's a lot. 40 points. And three points. <laughs> what a big extreme. That's big. Uh, you got to love the currencies. Right, just looking at the extremes here, um, I would say that's about right. Right. Okay, so on a five-minute chart, the extremes of 30 and 3. Yeah, 30 and 3. What's the average? 17. On average, five-minute chart, 17 ticks. Jason, good? Makes sense so far? I've Nothing has changed, right? It's E-mini, daily chart, weekly chart, hourly chart, three-minute chart, euro currency, same thing. So in order for me to identify a trend on the euro, on a five-minute chart, let me just expand this here, what I need is a 17-tick move, 17 ticks, and six candles plotted. So look at the most recent swing up or down. Um, we'll take it from right here. This is, it seems to be the highest high here on the chart. Has it moved 17 ticks from 83, 73, uh, 60, 66 maybe, 67? Right, I have to use a calculator for that. Have we moved down from 80, 70, 60, 60 something, right? Have we moved down at least 17 ticks and six candles? If the answer is yes, we have a trend down identified. If the trend is no, if no, then we're still in the original and most recent upward trend. We're still looking at that. Okay? Okay, guys, it's been an hour and a half. 
pretty long webinar. Hopefully it was chock full of information. Remember, I have a new mentorship class starting. Those of you who are interested, need more information, I still have room available. The classes are small. Everything is included. The ATO, Atlas Line, lifetime licenses. I know that some of you have been following me for a long time and I'm happy to see still the questions come in. I know you guys get new computers, so those of you with li lifetime licenses, after two, three years, you guys email me and say, hey, I got a new computer, please license me for the Atlas Line or please update my software. Um, Alfred, with the Atlas Line, I include, uh, first, you know, it's a live training. You get a live training with me when you buy the Atlas Line, but you also get, as soon as you purchase it, a prior recorded training and everything I do is recorded, so you get your own video account, Alfred. Any training sessions that we do, whether it's one or two, Alice Line uh, live sessions, a pre-recorded session, if you want to attend in the future, you want a refresher, no problem. Just call me the next time I have it scheduled. And it's recorded and, and it's placed on your own video account, so you can refer to the training session as much as possible, and that's a good thing. You got it, Joe. James, I don't have a trading room a trading room where I sit in the room all day and call out trades because I think that actually doesn't help traders when you're just following someone I prefer that you have your own ability to understand what's happening and, and call the shots based on the rules so I don't have a trading room and I think that it, it actually hurts traders I don't want you guys just to, to follow me if I say jump you jump I want you guys to understand this is a trade this is the reason this is how I manage it now I need to implement it. I want you guys to be independent, not followers like drones. So I don't have a, a trading room. I do, uh, James, offer great support. I have a staff that remotely logs in to uh, people who need help with installation. I do it all the time and I answer all the emails myself trading related questions. Sometimes I know there's probably some outstanding questions that I've been so busy I have to get to. A day or two is typically normal for me to get back to everyone on trading related questions, but I always get back to you guys. If I don't, resend the email. I might have overlooked it. Sam, it'll be on the blog, their webinar recording, so you guys can review this. Thank you, Dijon. Nice and slow, right? One day at a time. You got it, Dijon. Thank you. The power price action is more, there's more instruction, Dean, with the power price action. So um, if you're a beginner trader, and instead of just following the Atlas Line software, let's take a look at the E-mini. If you're looking at the um, at learning as a beginner trader, I think the power price action has much more information. There's much more information there uh, because you meet once a week with me for eight weeks. If you can make it, right, I'd say usually the classes are during the day. Uh, once a week on Wednesday and uh, it's live so it's not recorded it's live and uh, you get to learn more of price action trading the not only the basics but the signals themselves there's just so much more that you get with the power of price action on the other hand the Atlas line is what you see here software training the signals you follow so if you're Dean if you're looking to start um, I think that because of the time you get with me for the eight weeks, once a week, the questions, the support, I think the power price action is the way to go because of that. You're welcome, Sam. The scalper is a trade scalper, Alicia. The, the trade scalper is a, a method of scalping. Three tick target. It's a breakout method, Alicia. It trades every market. You got it, Bob. Good to hear from you again. All right, guys. Have a great rest of your Friday. I don't do a lot of these webinars, uh, but when I do, I try to give you something that you can take away from. Okay? Take care, everybody. Email me if you have any questions. Bye-bye now.